way back in 17th century and 18th century, the European travelers uh, traveling to India, they noticed a striking similarity between Sanskrit on one hand and some European languages on the other, these being Celtic, Gothic, Persian, Greek, and Latin. They felt that the vocabulary, they realized that the vocabulary and grammar of these languages was the same and was based on Sanskrit. In uh, 1790, William, Sir William Jones was the founder of uh, Asiatic Society of Calcutta, also a philologist, and decided that uh, these being similar, they form a part of Indo-European language, thus hijacking Sanskrit from India to a set of Indo-European language. In uh, 1800s, early 1800s, Rig Veda was translated into English, where the Arya of Rig Veda was translated into Aryan. A couple of decades later, James Pritchard in uh, 1843, I think, uh, said that if there is an Indo-European language, there must be a race speaking this language. So he said this race was Aryan race who spoke Indo-European language. And he positioned the Aryans in Central Asia. To those west of Central Asia, he called them Indo, uh, he called them European Aryans and to those placed in east of uh, Central Asia, as in India, he called them Indo-Aryans. Thus this Aryan became a uh, regular uh, term during those days. In the uh, 1880s, Max Müller declared that you know the Aryans walked into this country in 1500 BCE and wrote Rig Veda in 1200 BCE. So when he was challenged as how to how we come how have you arrived at these dates, he didn't have an answer really, and he finally gave up saying okay it could have been anywhere. Nobody, no power on earth, he said, will ever be able to determine when Rig Veda was written. And then in 1946, Sir Mortimer Wheeler excavating Harappa saw a fortification wall that was destroyed, and he declared this is the result of the Aryan invasion of India. And that's how the story was built up about Aryans and Aryan invasion of India. On the other hand, Arya, that the book is about, are the Aryas and Dasyus of the Rig Vedic people. So this is the Arya that Professor Lal has written about. This book has a very interesting map. And that map is indicative of the spread of the civilizational remains. Now obviously, after the India of the erstwhile got partitioned just about 75 years ago, a whole lot of evidence on the other side has been lost, which was primarily the places which were directly connecting us to Central Asia and also to West Asia and Persia, because uh, through Afghan, present day Afghanistan, erstwhile uh, Gandhar, was connecting to, through Herat, connecting us to Persia. And Persians are nothing but Aryans themselves. So there are some tablets, like there is a tablet of Darius, which is found in Persia, and that which they call ancient Persian. If you, if you read the script, the script is different. But if you read the, the spoken language is Sanskrit. So it says Aryan putra so-and-so, so-and-so's father was so-and-so. So 10 such generations using the word Arya Putra and Arya himself. So Arya is nothing but the, the king or, or the head of the uh, herd. And then his generation, his family history is found. The present book by B, Dr. B.B. Lal becomes very, very relevant in, in decolonizing our minds. Because uh, saying Harappan people were different and Vedic people were different and they all came from outside the country, 
becomes so irrelevant because the expanse of the civilization is nothing but Indus Saraswati civilization. And that Indus Saraswati civilization uses the same coinage. So it was advanced enough to use the coins. I mean, I know a whole lot of you are the students of commerce and you understand the trade. So trade and commerce was something which was connecting this whole region and the coinage was identical. So coinage being identical, people also have to be identical. And the best thing, of course, Dr. B.B. Lal would have written it when he would have written and his works are different in terms of the genetic evidence which is found today. I just thank uh, Mr. Rajiv Lal for bringing out this book, uh, though it's his father's book. But in addition to this, the genetic evidence today, there's a, there's, there's a uh, mutation which has happened amongst all of us. And A1C mutation is what you track genetically. So the A1 part of it, most of the men uh, in India possess that A1, which is ancient mutation as compared to A1C mutation, which is found in Europe, which only goes to prove that the migration happened out of this land mass to West Asia, Central Asia, and through Central Asia in a couple of hundred years, it went to Europe. So, in fact, I was reading, there's a very interesting line uh, which says, and, and it's by a European actually, where this person is mocking. Uh, it says, European Vidwanok me ye hoard itni zabardas thi ki us desh ke harek bhaag ke dawe lagaye gaye. Is par vyang karte ve Jean Paul de Mol 1918 ne kaha, humne dekh liya hai ki yadi koi German hai, so where Indo-Europeans ka adi sthaan uttar mein batayega, that they came from north. Yadi Rusi hai, to where Purav mein batayega, that they came from the east. Or yadi Italian ya Spaniard hai, to woh madde mein batayega. Matlab, unhi ko nahi pata, east, west, north, south, kidar se aaye the. The fact is, the migration happened via Central Asia to Europe. And the traces are found in the form of coinage. Uh, Vishnu Murthy, and I was once planning to do some project which, uh, I mean, bureaucracy and uh, things have their own take, but I wanted to do a project on Volga and Ganges, or because we don't have that many traces of Saraswati, ideally it should have been Saraswati, but because of lack of those traces, I thought maybe Ganges is not a bad idea. Because whatever excavations in and around these regions have happened, you find a lot of Vaishnav, Vaishnavite uh, signatures all over. And you find coinage which is common. So maybe a comparative study would bring in more facts. Genetic study combined with this archaeological study will bring in certain more facts. And I wanted to establish a, a center which is uh, Indus Saraswati Center uh, so that people stop calling uh, this as Indus Valley Civilization because the expanse is far beyond the Indus Delta. The expanse is Indo-Gangetic region and I am not a geologist but we have to track in which other forms Saraswati got to exist itself and some scientific data on that will help us understand that aspect that while a wall came uh, in in front of, in between Saraswati, and Saraswati disappeared. And because Saraswati disappeared, people started migrating because they had no place for sustenance, and they migrated far and wide. But where did the water disappear? The water will always, as we say, you know, in English, water will find its level. So the water, which was massive and huge in Saraswati, where has that water disappeared? We say that there are subterranean uh, flow of the river, uh, but the volume of the river, as it described in Rigved, was huge. So I'm sure the, the river may exist in some other form, in the name of other tributaries or others, but a different kind of study with evidence needs to be collected and done. But what I, I love the most 
about this book is that it establishes the ancient ancestry of Indians in India. So it's not as if why we welcome people from all over. We are not the originals. I say we are the originals. And I always say I'm the original Aryan because I come from Harappa directly and not far, far back, but 1947.